Kosinga, Vice Chairman of NITA, Dr. Malhotra, Mr. Rajesh Singh, Mr. Kamal Goda, delegates from South Asian countries, ladies and gentlemen. I am happy to be here today to address you as the Minister of Education, invited by the South Asian International Association for Early Childhood Care and Development on South Asian International Education Summit 2022 from 18 to 20th in Kalam. The main objective of this summit is to exchange views among educationists, principals, teachers and other resource persons especially engaging preschool education or early childhood education. In Sri Lanka, we have structured system of education. Actually, I took over this ministry three weeks ago. I was the Chief Minister of the Western Province for, from 1995 to 2000 and thereafter I was elected to the Parliament. My first portfolio is education, it was way back year 2000. But after that I held different portfolios. I had the opportunity to visit especially India, attending many conferences and international conferences <coughs> and together with then president. Uh, but this time I was given the entire human resource development sector in short. It means here we have higher education ministry earlier and then general education and then technical and vocation training. Now this time, we reduce our cabinet to 21. As a result, all three key areas in the education in one ministry. I am sure our Indian friends, they know very well in India, they don't have a Minister of Education in the Central Government. They have a Minister of Human Resource Development. Now it has been renamed, sir. Is that so? Yes. Okay, Recently. that is recent. Yes. But every state they have devolved the subject education. Similarly, after the introduction of 13th Amendment to the Constitution in 1988, after signing peace accord between Sri Lanka and India, between then President Jaya Javadan and then Prime Minister of India, uh, Sri Rajiv Gandhi. So now education also devolved to eight provinces. If I explain in short, we have 10,155 public schools in the country. We have teachers, 247,000 teachers, 16,000 principals, and over 3,500 education administrators or directors, and we have 4.1 million student population in public schools. 374 schools are managed by Ministry of Education, we, we call national schools. <coughs> Other than 375 schools, rest managed by respective provincial councils. We have nine provincial councils. And apart from that, we have 110 private schools, over 300 international schools, we have 19,000 preschools, and about 40,000 preschool teachers in the country. Two years ago, we introduced the national education policy for preschools. So we have trained all preschool teachers and diploma, high diploma, and degree courses are also designed 
in various institutions, especially the open university in Kalam, that's trained preschool teachers. And in Kalam University, we have diploma courses and degree courses for teachers. In general education, we have 19 colleges of education that is to train our teachers. Every year we recruit 4,000 students, student teachers, after GC advanced level examination based on their Z score and based on subjects, we recruit 4,000 teachers, we train them for three years with teaching practice in the third year. So other than that, we recruit graduates, provincial wise and national wise, by holding competitive examination and selecting to teach from junior secondary section and the senior secondary section from grade 6 to 13. So this is the normal structure, the general education, the preschool education. So now you are focusing on SPG goal 4 that is quality education. So all member countries of United Nations, 195 countries, we are committed to achieve the targets and goals by 2030. I am one of the resource persons when formulating 17 SDG goals and I attended three workshops in Geneva, in Berlin and in New York. So I am very familiar with 17 SDG goals. So now you have to achieve this. Now a week ago I was in Bangkok attending Asia Pacific Regional Education Ministers Conference. That is to revive the education systems <coughs> affected by COVID-19 pandemic. We also bad it. All the countries we have seen what, what happened in India, especially in Delhi. And we also have the same issue. By now, I think almost all the guests who gather here in this hall without mass. Because after the dedication of two years, we managed to control the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, very hardly you see the reporting of COVID-19 uh, patients and for the last many weeks not a single death reported as a result of COVID-19 in Sri Lanka. But these days we have another challenge that is an economic front and the social front. That, that issue was created by ourselves, mainly the politics. Right? Not a natural disaster. But we have to take up all these challenges as leaders. So I am ready to take up that challenge as a Minister of Education. The education sector covers almost the entire population. Now 4.1 million students means at least over 88 million parents and their relatives. They all are concerned about the education of our younger generation. So now there are so many circulars issued by public Minister of Public Administration, but after this I have a Zoom meeting with all nine provincial education authorities. Let's take a decision what we are going to do within the next two weeks. I am totally against closure of schools. In the year 2020, we lost more than 50% of school days as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, especially in the Western province and outstations. In the year 2021, we lost about 40% of school days. And 2022, first term also we lost about 30% of school days. We have to complete our syllabuses. 
we had to hold public examinations in time, but we are a little late. Now we are catching it up. These days, after you see oral level examination, normally over 500,000 students sit for you see oral level examinations. Now yesterday we started evaluations. It continues for next 10, 10 days, and we are scheduled you see advanced level somewhere around October. November. So then we can manage by end of the year, and we have to complete all the syllabuses. Now here. As a middle income country, we have infrastructure, especially in Palambu and cities, other cities. But in rural areas, you don't find the same facilities. So therefore, online education is not a solution to the school closures. Only the students who are studying in leading schools, international schools and private schools can afford. But at least one million students are in rural areas. The student po students in a school is less than 100. We have 3,000 schools. So I am very reluctant to close these schools. So uh, we have an alternative uh, arrangement. So I am taking a decision this evening <coughs> after having consultation with provincial education authorities. These are some practical issues that we are facing. But as a country, <coughs> we maintain 94% literacy rate in the country, or 51% IT literacy in the country. We have 19, sorry, 17 universities, public universities and we have higher education institutions with the affiliation of universities in other countries and we have for an example National uh, NSPA, National School of Business Management, they have some affiliations to Curtin University in Australia, Uppsala University in Sweden, well, I have visited all these schools some time back. So I have some experience in the field of general education. As a chief minister of the Western province, I handle about 27% uh, of the total population and the student population in the Western province, way back, so 20, 22 years ago. But now, I have also learned a lot of things in the field of education by attending various workshops, regional workshops and international conferences and I, I represented UNESCO executive board for four years, four consecutive years from 2006 to 10. So with that experience of course, we are in an era that we have to reform all our education systems. We are in the fourth industrial revolution here. Now we are in the third decade of 21st century. But here in Sri Lanka, of course, still our education system, we were inherited from British. Even in England, they have changed a lot. But we have changed very small things. So we are in the process of education reforms. I have to take up that challenge. We had to reform the preschool education. We have 600,000 students in lower kindergarten and upper kindergarten. And then from grade 1 to uh, 12, grade 1 to 13, general education, primary section, junior secondary and the senior secondary. We have reformed the general education. We have already started the training teachers, changing curriculum. Now in education, we have three pillars, attitudes and skills. Knowledge, of course, uh, we are in a very good position, knowledge. And with the content, you can get content any amount by going through internet. The issue is skills. Most of our students in higher education and in general education 
after leaving the school or the university, they are not in a position to convert their knowledge to skills. So we are reforming our education, matching to that. Less marks for examination, more marks for continuous evaluation in the classroom. We are going to introduce modules. After every module, there is an assessment and the students can earn credits. For the primary section, we are going to start English language as a second language from grade 1. We have English uh, medium, single medium, single and Tamil medium from grade 1, but English medium from grade 6. But we are going to introduce English from grade 1. So, those are some reforms that we are expecting. And recently I had myself the comparative study of education policies of Finland, the number one country in the field of education. And in our neighboring country, India. So, you have prepared your 2020 education new policy for India. I went through that and education policy of Singapore. I have done a comparative study. In Finland, it's a small country, the population less than Sri Lanka. From grade 1 to 9, the class teacher is responsible and accountable for the system. <coughs> Only at grade 9, the completion of 15 years of age, students sit for public examination for the first time. Because they have a very challenging process to select teachers. So Singapore also is the same. India of course. Number two, the population. So even in India of course. I find there are so many changes proposed in the new education policy of 2020. One is to improve STEM education. Now we call STEAM, <coughs> science, technology, engineering, now arts, mathematics, especially in Asian countries. STEM education was introduced by United States 20 years ago. It's science, technology, engineering, mathematics. But when it spread out to the Asian region, now here in our countries, we have added, added AOs, arts. Humanities, aesthetic subjects, and all that. So you can apply technology in aesthetic subjects. <coughs> so we have our leading university in Kalambo. You also can, if you have the time permits, you can visit fine art institution. Hmm? So now the old university students who are studying our uh, that particular university, aesthetic university, they are trained for you how to use the technology in music. So, we have to improve our education, not only just education, so quality of education, that is very important. So, now we are in the era, all the countries, to achieve <coughs> all this quality education, number 4 SDG, number 4 by 2030. So, as a result of COVID-19, we all were affected. We have a special case, but I am sure within a couple of months we can overcome all these challenges. Not only Sri Lankans and our neighboring countries. We always, uh, we have communication with our big brother India and then Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Maldives Islands, all these countries. So, the president and the Prime Minister and the new Cabinet of Ministers are working very hard to overcome temporary challenges. Those are temporary. So at this difficult moment, I appreciate the leaders of our neighboring countries. They all, they all help Sri Lanka. I am sure, now see for an example in the primary section, 1 to 5, we maintain almost 99% 
uh, uh, completion of primary education is not happening. Completion of uh, general education up to GCO level, uh, 86%. We are par with developed countries. So this is the situation in our country. Uh, we have introduced the free education way back in 1946. <coughs> At that time our literacy rate, rate was somewhere around 46%. Now, 94 We have doubled it. The free education means from grade 1 to first degree. Without fees, without tuition fees, education free. All the students are given two uniform materials every year. And subsidized transportation. They are given season tickets for the transportation. And uh, textbooks from grade 1 to 11, free of charge. So this time we have to import printing materials from India. I have made all the arrangements with Indian High Commission and our pressure to import all the materials. We have to get ready for the next team. So I just want to outline what we are doing at the moment, what we have to do to achieve SDG Goal 4 by 2030. So I believe this regional conference will be a success with your participation and your contribution as educators. Thank you very much. Sir, excuse me. Sir, I because I know already that we are face to face. Sir, sir problem that you mentioned, sir, the knowledge we can get immediately with the internet or... We are rich knowledge. Yes, no problem. But the problem is the skill. Yes. So, why can't you sacrifice one day? We have five days now. The, the one day for the skill development of our, our country because uh, technology is very important then the sports some schools they don't have the coach and all that uh, the, the system if you can uh, with the discuss with the authorities we are going to change the system <laughs> that is why we are going to introduce the education reform very soon as principals you all will be called for workshops uh, oh, sir, then and you understand what we are going to do uh, what we are doing is going to do is from grade 6 to grade 6 with the reforms. There will be a, a, a specially trained teacher to guide the students. At grade 9 there is an assessment. The maths, science, first language and the environment. After the assessing the student, the parents, student and the teacher can decide whether this particular student is continuing his education to O level, A level and university entrance or he can go to a nearby technical college and train them and get NVQ 4, 5, 6 and end up at Uniotech University. Okay, Any questions? Yeah. And I am the country representative of Ubiquiti University. Yeah. And I Ubiquiti. Really, Ubiquiti University. Ubiquiti. Where yes, you? this is a global university that we want to get SDG goals embedded into yeah. the curriculum, sir. Yeah. So I just have a request because I am in the process whether there, there is a possibility we could get the soft skills in the sense that is called uh, mastering in soft skills to get your personal journey outer journey and inner journey, whether we could link it up with the education curriculum to get the personalities development of yeah. the students. And then we are ready, sir, as Ubiquiti University, to come forward and support the government of Sri Lanka, the education curriculum, to support. Already I have done a training program with the principals, and if the opportunity is given, I am ready yeah. to support it. Sure, you are welcome, and you can come to my ministry. I am there every Monday, uh, Thursday and Friday because other two days I have to go to higher education uh, department and the skills development uh, department. Uh, Monday you can come there and meet me. So thank public you, day you can, anybody can meet me. Thank you. They are ready to support. Yeah. Thank you.